welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be trying this puzzle on the screen, which is called Squares and Circles, and it marks a debut on the channel for a constructor called Burning Curtains, um, which is a, a redolent pseudonym, um, and this has been recommended to us by none other than Afraid Not, um, and apparently it is a brilliant, brilliant puzzle. Uh, and also incredibly hard. I will tell you that it defeated a couple of the testers who tried it, um, but I am assured there is a logical way through it, um, so I'm going to give it a go. I've allowed myself plenty of time today. I'm recording slightly earlier than usual. Um, there's no sign of Maverick yet either, so we should be good to go. It's got a very, it's got a crazy rule set, frankly. I was just reading this before I turned on the webcam, uh, and I'll read them out to you in a moment. Um, a couple of things to mention. Um, it's nearly the 1st of October. On the 1st of October, if you're a patron of the channel on Patreon, you will get your your reward, which is an incredible, I think it's 15 or 16 puzzle Sudoku hunt um, based around lockout lines puzzles um, by some of the great and good of the Sudoku world. Um, it's very exciting. It's an incre It really is an incredibly high quality collection of puzzles and um, if you finish those puzzles first and send us in the answer to the meta, meta puzzle uh, then you will win uh, a game key for Bubba is You which is the, the game that Mark and I are going to be trying to stream on Thursday night UK time so 10 p.m. UK time we are going to give it a go and try and do that uh, that game I don't know how big the game is I've known nothing about the game at all I just know that thousands of you have suggested that it would be suitable for a live stream so we're looking forward to that and we have Jan Gunter to thank for uh, donating a whole sequence of um, game keys to us um, that allow us to give them away so yeah first first correct entry will get one of one of those game keys and we're also going to draw out of the hat anybody who solves all of those puzzles and send us sends us in the correct solution We'll, we'll enter the hat and could win another game key uh, for Bubba is You. So that's that's good stuff to know. Also on Patreon, by the way, we have the solution video to this incredible sort of 3D 6x6 puzzle from Sam Kappelman Lines. If you haven't had a go at this yet, there is a link to it under this video and it is well worth your time. Um, should take like, I would have said half an hour, maybe a little bit more, but it really is a, a delightful solving experience and um, yeah a lot of fun have a go at it if you've got the time um, anything else to mention uh, we're on 399,350 subscribers as of the time of the, this video started so we really are very close to 400,000 and if we do get to 400,000 Mark and I are going to make a video where we answer the community questions that have come in and we have had a lot of questions it could be quite a long video but it's going to be a lot of fun to do so we're going to hopefully get a chance to do that very soon now with all that said and done let's get on with squares and circles and I shall read you the rules normal Sudoku rules apply unfortunately there are a few more rules than that digits cannot repeat within a cage the digits in each cage sum to a square number e.g. zero, oh, so zero is included, I didn't pick that up when I read the rules before, zero, one, four, or nine. Cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. Okay, so we've got sort of crop key rules applying to the four white dots in the grid. What does that mean? I mean, that means if that's a four, this square here has to be a three or a five. Um, now, this is where it gets confusing. There are nine hidden zeros in the grid, which count as zero for the purposes of cage sums and white dots. The hidden zeros appear once in each row, column and three by three box and consist of all of the digits one to nine once each. Hidden zeros may not repeat within a cage. <laughs> I don't think I even know how to show you an example of what this means. Maybe we can should we have a look at this cage and just to try and work out what these rules mean? So there are nine hidden zeros in the grid, which count as zero for the purposes of cage sums and white dots. The hidden zeros appear once in each row column. So if this, so this cage, first of all, has to sum to a square number, but it may contain a hidden zero. 
So let's say that this cage sums up to 25. That is a square number. It could sum up to 25 because the cell that was the hidden zero in box four was in these three squares. Or it could up to add up to 25 and there could be, I don't know, a nine here that was actually counting as zero for the purposes of this cage, which would mean that these five cells have to add up to 25, which is possible, I think. Um, eight, seven, six, one, and three would work. And that would not count this digit. But then if we did say that this nine was, was a hidden zero, then no other nine in the grid could be a hidden zero because the numbers one to nine appear as hidden zeros once each. I mean, this sounds absolutely impossible. I have to say, it sounds absolutely, the more I think about this, the more impossible it sounds. Anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. I'll get a given digit today. Praise the Lord. Um, um, and yeah, now I get to play. Let's get cracking. My eyes are drawn to this funny shaped region in the middle box. Is that a sensible place for them to be drawn? This is obviously a nine, ah, well, okay. This is a nine cell cage. So those two digits are the same digit. That is something we can say immediately. And how do I know this? Well, I know that in a nine cell cage, all of the digits one to nine are appearing once each. But I also know that all of the digits uh, one to nine are appearing once in box five. So whatever is in this cell, because it can't repeat within a cage, it can't go in any of those cells. So its only position in box five is there. So these two digits are the same. Now, do we know anything about their hidden nature? The answer to that is I've not got a clue. I suppose that we do. Well, one actually one thing I know and this is probably stating the absolutely boldly obvious, but I will state it anyway, is that there is a hidden digit in this nine cell region. And the reason for that obviously is that 45, which is the secret, um, I've elided over the secret a bit by just jumping to it, but that's because it's so second nature to me. If you add up the numbers one to nine, you get 45. So I know that this nine cell cage adds to 45. And 45 is not a square number. So that means that one of the digits in this cage doesn't count. And in fact, that I know which digit that is. It's the nine, isn't it? Because the only square number that is anywhere close to 45 is 36, because seven squared is 49. And this, this cage cannot add to 49, even if we, if we, especially not if we deduct a digit out of it. And if we, if we make this cage add up to 25 instead, that would imply that there was one cell in here that was a 20 that we could deduct out of it, which is nonsense. So we're deducting a nine out of this cage. But this is where it might get tricky. Do we know where that nine is? Is this the nine? Is that what we're meant to be appreciating? So if this was the nine... then this would be a nine. Ah, no, that doesn't work. Right, ah, so in fact, we know this is not a nine. Oh, that's, pro that's a bit unfortunate, actually, because I think it would have been more useful if it had been the nine, but let's actually work through why this is not the nine. If this is a nine, we know that's also a nine. Now, in this cage, we know that the nine is not counted. Therefore, it's the hidden zero. Therefore, because hidden zeros cannot repeat within a cage, all of these cells are not hidden zeros, which means that this square is a hidden zero in box five, because box five needs to have a hidden zero. But that means that now we now have two digits in the grid that are the same, that are both hidden zeros. And that's not right. There must only be one nine in the grid that is a hidden zero. This is mad. Right. So that means by the dint of madness, this this is not a nine, which is about the most useless deduction ever. One of these digits is a nine and is hidden. Ah, I know what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to put 9 in the corner of the box to tell me that in this box 9 is the hidden digit so that I can keep track because we should then find at the end of the puzzle if we can solve it that in every corner there will be a different a different number now this cell now is a bit restricted isn't it because this is a real digit it's not the hidden zero in box 5 and it's in a single cell cage so it's got to be a 1 or a 4 and the reason it's got to be a 1 or a 4 is it's got to be a square number so this digit is a 1 or a 4 and therefore there is a 1 or a 4 in one of these three cells and and do we know anything about its hidden digit nature? I don't think we do. We know these are... Yes, we do know these are both real. Um, hmm. <laughs> I feel like my curtains are burning. Um, right, where do we look next then? I'm tempted to look at this box, to be honest, because I can see that this... This is quite a big cage, and together, I was about to say, and this might, yeah, okay, I was about to say something that would not be correct. Because these two cages completely fill box four of the Sudoku, we know that they must, yeah, they must add up to less they're both squares, or they're both... Oh, this hidden zero thing is doing my head in. They're both... They both add up to a square number. But that might be ignoring one of the digits in the cage. Well, in fact, we will be definitely ignoring one of the digits in one of the cages. Yeah, okay, So, so we know that, in fact... These two cage totals, which are both squares, add up to less than 45, don't we? Because, because one of the digits is not counted in the total. So, I'm just wondering, if does this have to be 36 then? If that's 36, this cage... We know the whole box. Oh, well, it, does, it does add to forty-five, but it's sort of been an, it's been adulterated by the hidden zero. If this is thirty-six, this cage has to add up to not nine, because if it adds up to nine, then there's there is no hidden di digit that's been missed out. So this has to not add up to nine, which means it must add up to either one, which is impossible, or four. If it adds up to four. And this is 36. Then the four, right, so the missing digit would be a five. At least you would then know the composition of this cage. But I'm just wondering, can this be a 25 cage? And if it's a 25 cage, this cage has to add up to less than 20 and still add up to a square so it could be 16 and that would be missing out a 4 from one of the cages or 25 uh, 9 doesn't work so if you go if this is a 25 cage and you add it added 9 to it you only get to 34 but given there's only one digit that's missing, that digit would have to be an 11, which doesn't exist in a Sudoku. So this could be a 25 cage. This would be, if it is a 25 cage, this has to be a 16 cage. And 4 has to be a hidden... Ah, so there's something going on, I think, with these possibility these are 4s. My windows are rattling because the weather is so bad again today. Um, if it's not Maverick, it's... It's just the climate. Um, so is that in any way helpful? Have we reduced the possible missing digits in this box then to either four or five? Am I confident about that? Perhaps I am. I mean, this. 
Oh, actually, I was just thinking that can actually be, that could be a 16 cage. Because you could miss out, you could make 16 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, miss out a high digit, but then this would have to be an enormous total. Yeah, okay, that's not possible. That's not possible either, because if this is a 16 cage, this cage has to get close enough to 45 that it's a single digit difference, but you can't make three cells add up to 25. 7, 8, and 9 only add up to 24. So, so the max, if this is 16, the maximum this can be a 16, that's 32, and you'd be missing a 13 from one cell, which is not going to work. So this cage is either a 36 cage or a 25 cage. This cage is either can't be a one cage because if you if it's a one cage you've got to have two missing digits so if that's 36 this has to be this has to be a four cage which is going to be a one and a three and a five missing because and if this is 25 this has to be 16 and there's a four missing but we don't know what the four would be missing from because it could be missing from that cage or that cage I think Or is that true? Is that true actually? If that's 25 and that's 16, is there a reason that this has to be? No, I don't think there is a reason. It's not the same as if this is the 36. Because if this is the 36, this is forced to be a four cage and carry the, the extra digit, the hidden digit. This is, <laughs> this is very hard. I've had 16 minutes. I've got two pencil marks and a nine pencil marked in the grid. And I don't know that I'm getting very far. But I think in this box, it's either four or five that's the missing digit. Ah, now hang on. This box as well has the same property, doesn't it? Ah, yes, this box has the same property in the sense that the cage, the two cages cover the whole box. So can't we run the log? Yes, and the interesting thing about this cage is you can't have a 36 cage in it because the cages can't, there's a five cell cage, the maximum of five cell cage can add up to is 35, five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine. So, this, this must have a 25 cage in it. And we said a 25 cage had to join up, although oh, maybe it could be either way round. Let's just imagine this is the 25 cage. That's the 25 cage. This has to be a 16 cage. And there, yes, and that's the only way it will work because of all the logic we just did up here. So, so this cage, or this box, is a 25 cage and a 16 cage. 25 and 16 is 41. That means that the four in this box is a missing digit. And that is actually gonna be important for this, I think, because now I think this has to not have a four missing. And therefore this is not a 25 cage. And if it's not a 25 cage, this cage is a 36 cage. And if it's a 36 cage, this cage is a, what do we say? That was a four cage. This has to be a four cage. And that means that there's a five missing from this, from this box. A five is the hidden zero. But the important thing I think is that this is a three cell cage. And if I'm going to make the cage add up to four, I can't, do that with three digits it's impossible so this must be a one and a three and then and then a missing five that feels like an enormous breakthrough i have to say so this is a 36 gauge ah i know what i should be doing mm, or maybe i don't well what i was thinking was is it going to be helpful to keep track of real digits in this puzzle? Because I know that these digits are all counting now because the bad digit, the naughty digit, is in there. So these digits are all good digits and the good 
begins with G, and green begins with G. So this can be a green cage, and this, I'm going to, B is a bad digit, and B, well, blue begins with B. So there is a bad digit in here, and a good, all good digits in there. And there are, well, okay, that's very unhelpful. But we know that there's a bad digit in the ring around the, these two squares are both good, and they're both the same. Oh, this is so annoying. So I'm going to make those, I'm going to give these a green flash. Um, now, have we now learned something more about the world? The answer is, I do not know. Do I now know anything more about these two cages? One is a 25 cage, one is a 16 cage, and we're missing a four out. I don't think I do, do I? What about that, this box up here? This box is also, I don't really like the look of this though, because there's three cages in here. So although the cages do map perfectly onto box one, which is not true of any other box, the problem here is that now we've got an, a sort of extra degree of freedom in terms of another cage to deal with. So I've now got three cages that have to add up to a number that's less than 45. So if these were three 16 cages, that would not work because that's 48. Ah, well, that's that's important, actually. Uh, in fact, that's beautiful. That's beautiful because if you can't make uh, a sensible total with three 16 cages, then... Does that mean I've got to have, oh, hang on. I was about to say, does that mean I have to have a higher cage total in here? But maybe it doesn't. Because maybe I could have, what if I have two 16 cages? If I have two 16 cages. And I don't know, another cage that's, Hmm, hang on a second. Let me just think about this. I've got three cages here that all have to add up to square numbers. And I don't... So if they add up to... They can't be three nine cell cages. Three... It can't be three nines because three nines is 27 and the, uh, the missing digit would be an 18. So can we do, what I'm interested in is, can I force there to be a high cage in here, a higher than a 16 cage? I don't know if this is a sensible thing to think about, but that's what I want to think about. So if there is, If there are two 16 cages in here, that would be 32. Then the other cage would have to add up to not 16, it would have to be a lower number. And if it was nine, that would be no good because that would create a missing digit of a four. But what if it was four? Um, That would give us, no, that would break that one. Oh, this is weird. Hang on a minute. So 16, 16 is 32. If you, if the other cage is a four cage, you need a nine as the missing digit, which doesn't work. If the other digit is a nine, you need a four cage that's missing, which doesn't work. And if the other cage is a one, which it could be, I suppose, that's not enough. Then you didn't need a 12 as the missing digit. So double 16 doesn't work. What about single 16 and double nine? No, 
no, that doesn't work. Single 16 doesn't work because single 16 plus double 9 is 34, I think. It is 34. That requires a missing digit of 11. So this is fascinating. Actually, this is really, really interesting. Um, these are the things I find. Well, they get me up in the morning. Now, not just when my curtains are burning. <laughs> I've got... I think I've proved that this cannot be made up of just cages that have a square total of 16 or less. Three 16s doesn't work. Two 16s doesn't work because you can't pair it with anything useful. One 16 doesn't work because you can't pair it with anything useful. So we have proved that there is, there must be a cage in this box that is higher than 16. And therefore it's a 25 cage and we actually therefore know it's that cage that cage is a real 25 cage and we know it's this is the 25 cage because 25 must be at least four digits because seven eight nine only added to 24 and therefore we know that every digit in here is a real a real digit and now i know in column three that the the the, the, the bad digit is down here because these are all good digits and we know that every column and every row and every box has a bad digit. So now the four in this box is down there. I'm going to use central pencil marks for that because I want to use the corners to keep track of the, the naughty digits. Um, so hang on, this was a... Now do I know? Yes, yes, I do know. This is beautiful. So now I actually know the order of these cages because well a all of these are green but b if this was the 25 cage in box seven it can't work anymore because the four is in one of those squares and counts for zero so the other three digits would have to add to 25 which is impossible so this is a 25 cage this is a 16 cage but really it's a 20 cage because it's got um, a four in it that counts for zero Now, this is a 25 cage, so that means these two cages, oh dear, have to add up to less than 20, and they contain a bad digit. So, 25, I'm not too sure how to do this. I think we're going to have to go through the options again, aren't we? If one of them is a 16 cage, that's going to be incredibly restricted because let's just imagine it's this one, just for the sake of argument. If this is a 16 cage and this is a 25 cage, we're already at a total of 41, but we know the total we must get to from has got to be less than 45 to allow there to be a missing digit. So, 41 so this would have to be like a one cage it would have to in fact it would have to be a one cage because if it was a four cage we would be at 45 and there couldn't be a hidden zero so it would have to be a one cage with a missing three oh bobbins that's probably possible look we've we've got four five and nine hang on so we've got 20 we could have 25 16 this would have to be the one cage because you can't put a one here and then have two hit missing digits. So this would be good grief, right? That doesn't work. That doesn't work for a very, very difficult reason indeed. And that reason, I mean, it's beautiful logic. It really is. I feel like Horace Slughorn in Harry Potter. It was beautiful magic. Um, but this is beautiful logic because I think it's right. If this is 25 and we try and pair it up with a 16 in the box, the other cage must be a one cage. It's not this one. So this is the one cage and the missing digit, the hidden zero is now a three because 25 plus 16 plus one 
is 42. So the missing digit is a 3 and has to live with the 1 in the cage. But now this square is a 5. But 5 in this box is the, mad, is the bad digit. But 3 in this box is the bad digit. So now we've got two bad digits in column 2, which breaks the puzzle. So this is not right. But that might mean... So this is a 25. And we can't pair it with a 16 in the box. So if we pair it with a 9, we get up to 34. And then the other cage is going to not be a 1, because then the missing digit would be a 10. Can it be a 4? Then it would be 25, 34, 38. Ah, no, no, <laughs> this is so clever. Right, that doesn't work either. So let's just go through this slowly, make sure I'm correct. If we go a 25 cage, a 9 cage, could be either of these cages, and a 4 cage, then we reach a total of 38, which means that the hidden zero is a 7, this 7 in box 1. But this 7 we know is a correct digit, because if it's not, I can't make that cage add up to 25. So this doesn't work. So now it's not 25 plus 9 plus 4. So does that mean it has to be 25 plus 9 plus 9? If it's not, what about if it doesn't have a 9 in it? What about if it's 25 plus, no, it's got to have a 9 in it, because if it doesn't have a 16 in it, 25 plus 4 plus 4, which is the next highest way you could get, is nowhere near enough. You'd have a missing digit of a 12. So there is definitely now, well, there's one option left, and if this doesn't work, I've made a mess of the logic, which is possible, because this is insanely complicated at least for me so this is a 25 i think both of these have to be nine cages now if that's true 25 plus 9 plus 9 is 43 that means there's a missing digit somewhere in this box that is a two so we put two in the top left hand corner and these are both nine cages but we don't know whether the 2 goes in this one or the 2 goes in this one. If the 2 went in this one, this would be a 2-9 pair. And that doesn't work. Good grief. Good grief. Why doesn't that work? Well, if this is a 2-9 pair, these three squares are real and add up to 9 without using a 2. So they're 1, 3, 5, because 1, 2, 6 is impossible, and 2, 3, 4 is impossible, because the 2 isn't available. And if those three squares are 1, 3, 5, you've got five digits in column 1 selected from just three different numbers, which is not going to work. So, now, this does not have a 2 in it, so this does have a 2 in it. These are real. These... We can't have two hidden zeros in column one, so they are real. This is not real, and this is therefore the five in box four. That is a five. Those are not five. Now, ah, yeah, now look, this is the bad digit in row five of the grid. So those squares are now good digits, i.e. green. This adds up to 9 and is not one well ignoring the 2 which is definitely in one of those cells we've got to make the other two digits add up to 9 without being 1 8 without being 2 7 without being 3 5 so this is 2 4 and 5 these add up to 9 oh bobbins <laughs> i was thinking we were going to get them but we're not they can be 1 1 8 or 3 6 unfortunately this square, though, is on a crop key dot. Ah, so that can't be 8, because it can, then can't be next to a consecutive digit. So that can't be 1. So this is 2, 4, 5. This is 1, 3. The remainder of this column is 6, 7, 8, 9. And I make no excuses for um, 
fully pencil marking here because I feel I've earned these pencil marks more than in most cases. Um, now, do we know anything more? Oh, I see. There's a nine in one of those cells. Oh, no, I'm not using. I need to use central pencil marks to avoid getting confused with the purpose of my corner pencil marks. Nine. What was this cage? This this cage was the 25 cage, wasn't it? Ah, beautiful. Right. This is the 25 cage, but it's got massive digits down its left hand side. So the minimum I can make those digits add up to is six, seven and eight, which is already 21. So these squares are either one, three or one, two, but they definitely have a one in them. And if they definitely have a one in them, that domino there does not have a one in it. So this is not a one, eight pair which means it is a 3-6 pair, which means this, oh no, that digit is not resolved on the Kropke dot. These squares don't have a 3 in them. So this is a 1-2 pair, which means these squares have to add up to 22 to make the whole cage add up to 25. That must mean we miss out the 8, which means this square's become an 8 in the column. Um... Right, okay, well, I've got four. I'm not sure about my pencil marking here, but if it's correct, those two squares have to be a four nine pair. Yeah, I suppose it is, isn't it? Because what the other, the corollary of this is think, to think about these three squares, which are now known. In fact, they are a one eight nine triple. And that means eight has to go here in box seven which does make these a four nine pair. So that pencil marking was correct. And these squares have got to be two, six and seven, I think. And these squares have got to be four, three and five. Now, what do we say about this one? Yeah, this works because we said this had to add up to 16 or in reality 20 because we're missing out the four and it does add to 20. So I, I feel like we're on the right track here. Um, but now these are the same. And rather annoyingly, it looks like they could end up here with a four or one. If they're a one, they end up here. So now I'm not sure whether I meant to look at this six cell cage perhaps why is this here and what's this telling me it's telling me that see the problem with this is it could even be ludicrously i mean it's not going to be a 16 cage i don't think if it's a 16 cage then even if one of the even if the missing digit is a nine that's the maximum this could add up to as a string would be 25 which means these would have to add up to 12 oh, well it's not possible because that would have to be nine six five repeating the nine in the row so this is not a 16 cage this is either a 25 cage or can it be a 36 cage if it's a 36 cage these squares here I see now I'm getting confused. The minimum they could be would be one, three, and two, which would be six. 42, missing a three. I don't think I've used three yet as a missing digit, have I? The missing, I've got to keep track of my missing digits. I've done, I found a two, I found a five, I found a four. So two, four, five, and nine are the only ones we found. That's very disappointing. The other thing I've got going on is I've got three perfect dominoes in row one. Ah, now none of these can be a 16. Okay, that might be important because if any of these is a 16 cage, you need to put the seven in them. They'd have to be a seven, nine pair. None of them can be that. So these are all adding up. These are a maximum 
of three nines, which is 27, but they could have a hidden digit in them. So 27. Yeah, that doesn't actually do it, does it? Because either these could be three real digits adding up to 18. Oh no, they wouldn't add up to 18 because there'd be a hidden digit over here. They'd have to add up to a bit less than 18. Oh, this is mad. This is so difficult. This is so difficult. I've had 14 minutes and I don't know what I'm doing. I just feel I'm losing my marbles here. Oh, good grief. Um, is this... 40 minutes, I've done... I've got four digits. No, I can't count that digit, can I? That was given that one, three digits. Um, so I don't think we do know anything about these after all. I think maybe they are, maybe they, what if they were two nines and a four? That would be 22, but they could have a hidden, and the problem is they could have a hidden nine. And then they'd add up to an enormous total and those, these wouldn't be under any constraints at all. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to think about this now. I was actually just wondering about the digit nine in this row. Is that a sensible thing to worry about? If you put nine, yeah, if you put nine in any of those six cells, what do you do with that? How do you deal with that? No, th that's okay, I think, isn't it? Because if you do that, you can do it. If that's a nine. No, it's fine, because this could, in fact, this, this wouldn't even have, we wouldn't even know if this was a real or an unreal digit. If it was a real nine, its partner could be an unreal digit, it could be a hidden zero. And then, then the cage would add up to a square because it would just be, add up to nine. And if it's actually a naughty number, you can still make the cage add up to a square by putting accompanying the nine with a one or a four. Oh, this is this is madness! It's absolutely impossible. But all of the rest of this grid looks entirely impractical to attack. Um, seven. Oh, is it two that I've got to think about then? Because I can't. Oh, it is. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. Oh, good grief. That did not occur to me at all. So the key here is to think about the possible totals for a two digit domino in this row. The two, we've ruled out 16 already. So we have to think about how easy is it to make totals like four and nine. And the point is that four and nine, you, ca you just can't put two, in fact, in any of these squares. Let's try it. Okay, I put the two in. Now, what are we going to accompany the two with in order for this to add up to a square number? We're gonna, we can accompany it with a two, that will make it four, but obviously it repeats the two, that doesn't work. We can accompany it with a seven, that makes nine, that doesn't work. So the only other way we can do it is to say that the two is over here Hang on, can we put the two over here and make it the hidden zero? No, we can't, because the two is not the hidden zero in any of these squares, because the two is the hidden zero in box one. Good grief, right, so I think I finally understood the, in the implications of row one. You just can't put a two in those six squares, because it, if you do, it has to be hidden 
and it can't be a repeated hidden. So the only place for a two in row one is exactly there. Wow. And well, that's going to be quite interesting because now I've learned that the whole of the rest of this row is real. And we know none of them is a 16. So do they have to be three, three nines now? Is that so? If they're three nines, that's twenty-seven. The two isn't counted, is it? Oh, the two, no, the two is counted in the row. Ah, oh, it's counted in the row because <laughs> it's only affecting. It's only zero for the purposes of the white dots and for the and for the cage total. So, okay, that's nonsense. So 27 plus another nine is 36. So this needs to be a nine. Yeah, and if I drop these down to anything less, this digit can never be high enough, can it? So let's just double check that. Double nine four is 22, which means these three digits have to add up to 23, which is patently impossible. So these are, these cages all add up to nine, and another, oh, see, and another way of thinking about that now is where do you put the nine in the row? Because if you put the nine in any of these squares, you've got to accompany it with a zero because you know that all these cage totals are correct and they are nine. So this is a nine. And that means I don't know what it means. Is it the crop key dot now? These are the other ways of making nine in two digits that are not two seven. So these are all either one eight, three six, or four five. Yes, it is. Look at this. This crop key dot here. Can you ever put a one or an eight on it? No, because if this is a one, this square needs to be a two. And if this square is an eight, this square needs to be a seven or a nine. All of these digits have gone. It's really clever. So you can't put one or eight in either of these squares, which means you can't put one or eight in those squares either, because the moment you put one or eight in one of these two squares, given the cage adds up to nine, you're gonna put it in the other one too. So this is a one eight pair, and these squares here are three, six, and four, five in some order. And we finally breach the gap across into the right side of the grid again. Um, I have no idea what this means. Uh, is it this one now? If we play guess, guess the next step. Why is it this one? Oh, well. I think it is this one because something I've just realized is that those two squares turn green. So actually there is a hidden zero in this cage, which is not terribly surprising, I suppose. But does that mean, can this really be 36 now? Because if this is 36 with a, with a missing digit in it, that means it's adding up to at least 37. So let's say this is 36 and the missing digit is in it and it's the minimum thing it can be. Then it would add up to 37. But those three squares. Oh, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, but only just. If we minimize those three squares, we do keep the row down to 45 in total but we've got a one here and we've got a we've got a hidden one in there as well so we've repeated one in the row and that won't work so this is not a 36 cage which means well it can't be a 16 cage can it? i think i looked at that before 16 plus 9 is 25 these would have to add up to 20 which they only just can't do but they cannot do okay so this is a 25 cage and it does have a missing digit in it so it's a 25 cage plus something okay it's a bit disappointing <laughs> how do we work out what the something is um it's a 25 cage. What we could do is perm every single option here, but that's going to be a lot of those. I don't really fancy doing that. 
25. If we minimize these, that's never going to be enough, is it? So we go 1, 3, 4, that's 8. No, that's not good. The missing digit would be a 12. What about if we... Maybe we can eliminate the 1 then as a possibility. So let's put the... Let's go 25, 26, and let's take... Oh, I see. Right, hang on. Uh, something I hadn't really appreciated. Yeah, this domino has a binary value. You can't, you can't, you can never pair four with six here because they're not consecutive. So this is either adding up to seven or it's adding up to 11. There's only those two choices. So if that's 25, 26, and this is 11, oh, that's no good. Is it, they'll be missing eight, I think. Let me just double check that. I'm gonna just do that maths again. 25, Twenty six, thirty seven. There's a missing eight, and I don't think, I don't think I've used eight yet. So I think that's a legitimate bother. So twenty five, twenty five one three four didn't work. Twenty five one six five did work. What about 25? The fact that these, this domino is binary does mean that the, the, the ways of constructing these three digits has come down somewhat. So I am going to check them all out. If this is 25 and we put 8 and we've got 33 and then we go low. Ah, that doesn't work. That gets us a 5 as the missing digit because we reach a total of 40. So 25... So 20, let me just go through this again. 25, 1, 3, 4 doesn't work. And we've just found out that 25, 8, 3, 4. Ah, so this is never 3, 4. That's what we've learned. This is never a 3, 4 domino because you can't pair it with 1 or 8. You can't pair it with 1 because you don't get to a high enough total, and you can't pair it with 8 because the hidden digit is then a 5, which has already appeared in the puzzle. So this is a six, this is a five, and this is a four, and this is a three. And now we're going to, I think we're going to be able to probably isolate the hidden digit here. So let's just check this. We've now got definitely got 25 plus 11. That's 36. So 36 plus one is 37. The missing digit would be an eight. Yeah, okay, so oh, I see. So it's one or eight. Oh, oh, that's beautiful if that's going to matter. It might not matter, but I'm noticing, given I now know that the missing digit in this cage is a 1 or an 8, but there's a 1-8 pair here, the missing digit is not in those three cells. So they, they turn green, and one of these squares has got to be the missing, the hidden zero, in box 3. Now... So these three squares are all now green. Do we know what the total is for these? Is there a reason these can't be 16? They probably are 16 actually, because probably if they're anything lower, you probably can't get to I mean, if these were, and the problem is these could be, oh, that has to be a square, although it could be a liar as well. Oh, this is, <laughs> every time I think I'm making progress, I find myself in a Gordian knot that I can't carve my way out of. Um, right, okay, well, how about we do it a different way then? This is not a four cage because it's a real cage, and if it was a four cage, it would be a one and a three, and that's not possible. If it's a nine cage, it can't be a one eight, 
it can't be a 3, 6, and it can't be a 4, 5. So if it's a 9 cage, it's a 2 and a 7. And if it's a 16 cage, it's a 7 and a 9. So there is always, believe it or not, a 7 in that cage, which means there is a definite 7 in one of those three cells. Now, hang about. That domino is under an identical restriction, isn't it? What? Yes. Oh, this is good. Right. This, this is a hidden zero. Why is this square a hidden zero? Well, let's imagine it's not just for a moment. Let's imagine that's green. If this is green, how, what, what total should we choose for these, this domino? We can't have four because one, three isn't available. If we go for nine, we know it has to be two and seven, and that's going to make this cage a bit difficult to fill. And if it's 16, it's seven and nine, and that still makes that cage a bit difficult to fill. So this is not a real cage. And the only way of it not being a real cage is for this square to make it unreal, which means those two squares turn real. This square now is a square, a real square, and it's not one. So it's four or nine. Well, it's not four. Is that really true? So that's a nine, I think. Oh, this is beautiful. Now this, this is resolved. This becomes a two seven. I don't believe it. Um, so now what do we know? <laughs> Have we... Have we discovered something? Ma this feels magical. I mean, it feels magical. How can this be? I think this is Burning Curtain's first puzzle. It's certainly the first puzzle, I think, that's been submitted to the channel. Um, right, so we now need ones, fives, sixes, and eights into these squares. Ah, that's gonna, ah, I can see immediately. Right, I see what's happened. In this row, this square's become a one. Oh, this is gorgeous. This square's become a one or an eight. But in its cage, it's the only real digit, so it must be a square, because the cage total has to be a square, not counting the bad digit, so it's a 1, which means that's a 1 and that's an 8, which means that the bad digit in here now is not a 1, and it's an 8, so there is a bad 8 in box 2, and these two squares are a 5-6 pair. And the, and the bad digit is not 5, because five's already appeared as a bad digit, so that's a 6, that's a 5. That's not ah, that's not a five or a six now, which means this is adding up to nine, wasn't it? So that's this is a high digit, and this is attached to. Well, actually, that's interesting. It, it can't be attached to a four because if you go five four, you have to go five again, because this is adding up to nine as well. So this is in fact just a high digit, and that in fact is therefore a low digit. I don't think that's going to be terribly revealing is it but we have got a five six pair on the, on the crop key dot and now this six means the whole of the rest of this column is entitled to be good um Um, <laughs> this is a white crop key dot, so that's got to be consecutive with five. It's four or six. If it was four, it would be very useful because that would force these two to be double one. Ah, now hang on. Yes, right. Here is a small point that might matter, actually. This square here is a four or a six, but it's also green and that's because four and six have already been bad once each in the puzzle the six has been bad here the four is being bad somewhere in there so this is a good digit which means that if it's a six that's not adding to a square so this would have to be uh, this is this is just beautiful it's just more beautiful beautiful logic look at this cage now if that's a six, five plus six is 11, and that is definitely, there's two good digits adding up to 11. 11 is not squared, so we've got to add something else to it. 
Well, the only digit we can reach that's a square is 16. That's going to require double 5, which is not possible. You can't repeat 5 in the cage. So this square is, I just don't think it's a 6, it's a 4. Oh, I was about to say that, unfortunately, that doesn't tell us what this digit is. Because it could be a bad digit. Because 5 plus 4 is a square. Or it could be a good digit if it's a 7 and make the cage add up to 16. But at least we've got this as a 4 now. So that does tell us those two digits. I can now remove the purple flashing. And it gives me this digit. gives me this digit. Ah, the 4 actually gives me that digit and that digit as well. 9 is looking at... Oh. Oh, so this is... Right. Yeah, this is important. This 9 is ruling these squares out from being bad digits. Because we know the bad digit in box 5 is a 9. And it can't go in those cells anymore. So one of these squares is a bad digit. Which means the bad digit in row 4 is there. One of these squares is a 9. One of these two squares is a 9. Do we know what the bad... No, we don't. We know it goes in that cell, don't we? But it could... Or do we know... Hang on. What bad digits have we had now? We've had 2, 4, 5, 6, 8 and 9. So this is 1. It's not 1. So this is 3 or 7. But the unfortunate thing about that is that we don't seem to know which. But we do know that this is a bad digit. So the rest of the column is a good digit. And the rest of the box is good digits. So that all of this is now a good digit. Is now a complete sequence of good digits. So do we know what this adds up to? It can't add up to 36. It's only got five digits. If it adds up to 16, 16 plus 1 plus 4 is 20. Well, you can't make those squares add up to 25, no matter how hard you, try, hard you try. So this adds up to 25. That makes 30 if we add the 1 and the 4 in. So these have to add up to 15 to make the box work and add up to 45. For that. So this square is a 7. This square is an 8. That 7 sees this cell. And this cell. Oh, I needed to put those sevens, I think, in the middle of the box so that I'm being consistent. One of those two squares is an eight. Oh, in fact, look, I'm going to do better than that. That's a four, eight pair. These two squares just by Sudoku. Four, eight, four, eight, looking into the box. So... Ah... Aha, yeah, this is quite nice, actually. Five is just placed in box six there. Three is placed here. These squares are now known, so they are two, six, and nine. Which means this square is seven. That square is not a seven. Oh, please let me be able to solve this. This eight is giving me an eight and a one. One now lives in one of those cells. Ooh, hoo, hoo, which, look, this thing has a bad digit in it, this cage here. Eight lives down there somewhere, not in the top cell by Sudoku. That's not a six. Um, one must be in one of these three cells. What have we got? We've got one and three, I think, are the remaining bad digits. Oh. Yes. Okay. Is this correct? This... This cage cannot contain a three. So it's simply... Um, but we know that this cage does have the bad digit in it in box nine so it must the one is in this cage and is bad so the three in this cage ah uh, i need to correct my pencil marks this has a three in the corner because this and this has a one in the corner 
So this, let's just double check now. We've got all the digits. We've got a one here. We've got a two here. We've got a three here. A four here, a five here, a six, a seven, an eight, and a nine. Yes, perfect. So, so these three squares, well, two of them have to add up to a square, but we can't use one. So this is not adding up to four because one and three would be needed. If it's adding up to nine, can't use one eight, it would have to be one, two, seven. If it's adding up to six, oh, it's, it's similar to some other logic we saw somewhere else. I think this, if it's not that, it has to be, has to add up to 16 and be one, seven, nine. So that again, there's always a seven in here. So that's not a seven, beautiful. So that's a seven. Um, okay, <laughs> does that do it? Have we, have we, have we figured it out now? I don't know. What about this cage? This is a real cage that's got an eight in it. So it can't add up to nine, so it must add up to 16. And it's not got one seven in it. So this is either two six or three five, I think. Bother, that doesn't seem to do anything. What about this square? Is this restricted? We've got to put, two, is it just twos, threes and fours into those squares? So this square, Oh, hang on, that, that can't be right. That square seems to have to be a two, just by Sudoku. Is that right? It does seem to be. I've got a three and a four in this column already, so that's a two. And if that's correct, then I can't put two down here. So this becomes one, seven, nine. And this square here, therefore, is a six, which means this is a two and this is a nine. And this two means that's no longer a two, six pair. So this is a three, five pair. That fixes the four and the three at the top of the grid. Now this adds up to nine. So that's six, that's five, that's four. That four sees a four and an eight. These squares now are known. They are going to be three, eight, and nine. And that's not an eight. So given it's the eight that's the naughty digit, that square now acquires the status of being green. And uh, I can get this digit at the bottom of column eight. That's got to be a six, which means that's not a six over, over here. Um, these three squares, oh, this is interesting. This Z pentomino here, it's got four decent digits in it. So what do these add up to? Twos, fours, and eights in the column. That's not an eight. Um, two, four, eight, and six add to 20. A 20 is not a square. So this square is a real digit, and it must be a five, because that's the only, way, the dig, only square we can get to. it. And look, this five gives me that digit. So that's a five, and that's a three. That's not a three, or a, uh, that's a four. And four is the bad digit in box seven. So those squares are not four and therefore they're not. So this is the blue digit. That's therefore not a blue digit. And one is the bad digit in box nine. So that's not a one. And three is the bad digit in box eight, isn't it? Do we know where the three goes? The answer is, I know it's not there. I don't know. Four has to be on one of those two squares by Sudoku I'm seeing. This four is giving me a two actually back over there. So maybe we can do some more stuff. Where, do, where does one go in row seven of the grid? Only in that cell. 
which is a bit annoying because it's displaced my three that was keeping track of the of the bad digit. Well, one is definitely not the bad digit here. Um, I'm not sure what we have to do here. We've got to maybe pencil mark the rest of the rows. Let's have a look. We have at least got five digits in row four, so we still need to place twos, threes, fives, and sixes, I think. Twos, threes, fives, sixes. That can't be a six or a five. That can't be a five. That square, unfortunately, seems to be able to be anything. Bother. <laughs> uh, this square is needs to be two, four, six. No, no, not four two six seven or nine actually that's a bit disappointing so that square can't be six. Oh, this is yeah this has not gone very well actually i don't think we've learned very much at all what about the crop key dot down here do we know anything about that we know that oh yes this is it right here we go look at this crop key dot now what it cannot be is a two three pair because that's going to break that cell so it must, so given it can't have a two or a three on it, it must contain a seven, well, it's got to be selected from sevens, eights and nines, which means there's an eight on it. Oh, maybe that doesn't do anything. It means that square's not an eight. Oh, it gives us an eight there. Oh, an eight is the bad digit in box two. So that square becomes green. This square, therefore, is not the bad digit anymore. In fact, the whole of this column becomes good digits, doesn't it? That can't be a 9, therefore, because the 9 is the bad digit in box 5. Whoa, this is becoming quite complicated. Um, Oh, I see. <laughs> this is love. It's still lovely. It's still giving incredible stuff after one hour, 12 minutes. But now, now where in this box does the three go? We know that three is the bad digit. It's not on this crop key dot. It's not there because there's a good, a bad digit already in the column. So it goes in one of those two squares. And therefore, once they become, once the three is down here, look, it sees that square. So that's a nine, that's a three, that can no longer be a nine, which means this is now a good digit and not a nine, which means the nine in box five goes here and is the bad digit, which means that becomes a seven, eight pair. This three means this square is a two. Come on, I've got a six, seven pair here. So that's a two, that's a six, that's a three, that square's a five. I've got a five here looking at a five, three. That places the three. And that's going to, yeah, this is going to be it, isn't it? Now, now I know this square is not. So now I know this is the three. I know this is the one because you can't repeat the bad digit in the, in row nine. So that means, that means I've got this one and this two over here. So that's a one and that's a two. Two is placed just by Sudoku in box eight. That's a two, that's a four, that's a four, that's an eight, that's an eight, that's a seven. Bobbins, I thought I was gonna finish it, but I, maybe it doesn't. Now these two squares are at six, nine pair, there's a nine up here. So that's a nine, that's a six, that's a nine, that's a seven, that's a seven, that's a nine. This is a six, that's a six, that's a seven, that's a seven, that's a two. Those are all green. Yes. Oh, pleased with that. I am pleased with that. That was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant puzzle. Oh my goodness. Burning curtains. Take a bow. That's so original and just insanely clever. Insanely clever. Anybody who has worked through that puzzle, um, I think we'll just appreciate the utter genius that has gone into setting that. It is, it's so cunning and 
and delightful. I mean, the logic, it's ridiculous. I mean, the fact that, and I'm not sure if I've done this in the right order, but the fact that you can work out sort of what's going on in the first three columns, and then there was stuff like these cells not being able to have a two in them. It was fascinating. It's so original. It really is. This is one of the great puzzles. If we ever make another book, this puzzle needs to go into it because it is just phenomenal. Absolutely loved it. Looking forward to the comments as well. I'm sorry it's taken me a long time to solve, but in this instant, I don't think I was perplexingly awful at solving it. That felt like my brain was on fire. Um, and yeah, I mean, I might have missed some things, but I found some things in that that I'm pretty pleased with for once. So let me know in the comments how I got on. Let me know in the comments how you got on. And please give the plaudits loud and plenty to Burning Curtains, who has absolutely, ex well, they've, they've produced a masterpiece. Thanks for watching. Back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>